And maybe we need to break away from colonialists versus Nazis, because that's that's the model we that do. has brought us to this point. No, you're right. Obviously, I think you're right. What I'm where I come at this is from a basically pro-Israel person. I mean, to someone who's a huge admirer of the state of Israel. I, how one could not admire the state of Israel seems to me to be impossible in in so many ways. But it's just increasing qualms about the costs and the the thing that that might make one. Let's put it this way: skeptical of this is simply the fact that that in large parts of let's say greater israel judea samaria the west bank the the policy of the last at least i think 20 years has been literally the great replacement it is it is a a literal version of an it's attempt a to it's a complicated term uh, <laughs> well it is but let's put it this way it's designed to maximize the population of Israelis so that there could never be a two-state solution and and has been engaged in successive by successive governments of the of Israel resisting all even the slightest american pressure refusing to compromise with obama refusing to stop the settlements even now in such a way that a, a neutral observer looking at this says this is not a good faith two-state solution country this has, hasn't been in good faith for 20 years. That they are, how could one possibly negotiate a two state solution when one side refuses at any point even to freeze the, repopul the deliberate repopulation of those, of those areas? I mean, that's, to be honest, you, that's where I just get off the train. That, yeah. is, that is just wrong. And everyone can see it's wrong, and yet the Israeli government of both, both right and left have backed this, and also liberal Zionists in America have done nothing serious to stop it. That, that sort of shifts the neutral observer from thinking, this is not, this is, this is an attempt to, to push these people out of their own lands for, for reasons of, of that the just is just not just if occupying land even defensively is then followed by uh, repopulation for deliberate purpose then then th this is a, it, it, it violates all sense of morality how do you respond to, to that that's where i've gotten off the bus i can't i can't tolerate those settlements i can't tolerate the ideology behind them i can't tolerate the cruelty and misery that they're inflicting on people and the humiliation they inflict daily on human beings whose lives whose only sin has been living in the place their forefathers have lived forever my first response is that it's a serious moral argument and it needs to be treated with respect. My second response is to say that the way that Israelis have experienced this conflict in the last 20 years, and you're right to cite tw the 20-year mark, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment, feels very differently. The trajectory feels very differently. The way it looks from the outside is that this overweening power is throwing its weight around and abusing a, a helpless population. The way that it feels from within the Israeli context is that we have been on the receiving end of, of unbearable waves of violence in the last 20 years that have upended the most basic sense of security that Israelis have. And, and let's go back to that to 20 years ago when the Oslo process failed. The last, the last real negotiation for a two-state solution, substantive negotiation, was in the year 2000 at Camp David when, when President Clinton invited Arafat and Ehud Barak to, to negotiate a deal. And Barak stunned the Israeli public by being the first Israeli leader to not only offer a two-state solution, but to offer the redivision of Jerusalem 
And I can't think of another country that offered to voluntarily share sovereignty over its capital city as Israel did it in 2000, and crucially to uproot dozens of settlements. Now, when I speak about this, it just sounds like it's it's old history already. But here, it's not old history. It's, it's a living wound because what happened after Camp David, and then that was followed by the Clinton proposals, when Clinton put his idea of a peace plan on the table, Ehud Barak said yes, and Arafat walked away. Wasn't just the end of the peace process, but we went through the worst four years of, of, of in the history of Israel. It was four years of suicide bombings when we were in danger of losing our public spaces. Israelis were afraid to congregate in their public spaces. And there was a sense of the society unraveling. And it wasn't just the terrorism. It was the fact that the terrorism followed a serious Israeli offer for a two-state solution. When that broke down and the way in which it broke down, when that happened, the Israeli left unraveled. 